Oh, there's a couple sample um, uh, writing and balancing chemical equations. First one here is uh, propane reacting with oxygen in a combustion reaction to form carb carbon dioxide and water. Um, uh, uh, this one is typically lots of people are okay with with this one because this part of it is always the same. But I wanted to show you this just quickly to indicate one thing. So this propane, if you were to draw that molecule, uh, it looks like this. So it has three carbons attached in a row and then hydrogens uh, filling out the outside. So when you react that with oxygen, that looks like this, uh, this whole thing breaks apart. So this hydrogen takes off and this hydrogen, this carbon goes by itself, etc. So they break apart and they can reform. But they may not reform this, they will reform, uh, reform into something else. So maybe this carbon here hooks up with a couple of those oxygens and forms CO2. But maybe this hydrogen also hooks up with, uh, maybe these two uh, hydrogens hook up with one of these oxygens to form water. So uh, when things break apart and reform, you got to figure out what the formula is going to be that they reform to. So this one, um, uh, initially we have three carbons that are broken apart and they can go somewhere, right? Over on this side, we know it forms carbon dioxide, but that's only one carbon. And that's why we have to balance things. So if I have three carbons over here, on the other side, I'm going to have to wind up with three carbons too. I have eight hydrogens on this side, so over here, I'll put a four there to give me uh, eight hydrogens on that side. Then when I count up here, I have three times two, that'd be six. Four times one would be four. So altogether, that's ten oxygens on the right side. So I'd need to put a five there. Um, and so I would need five of these things. There. So I need five of those things in order to, um, uh, when they react and reform, to form this stuff on this side. Okay, let's do another question that's not a, a combustion one. So here I have magnesium sulfate reacting with sodium hydroxide, and what is that going to form? Just for interest, if you look at the periodic table, let me grab one here. If you look at the periodic table, um, magnesium is right here, and it's a 2 plus ion. I'm just going to put that up there. It's not part of my chemical reaction, but I'm just putting it there just for reference. Sulfate is right over here, and it's a 2 minus. And so because the charge is balanced, that means I just need one of each of them, and they're balanced. Sodium, if you look at the chart, is a 1 plus, and hydroxide right there is a one minus. So again, the charge is balanced, so they stay. In a double replacement reaction, this positive guy here, magnesium, is gonna hook up instead of with this negative one, it's gonna hook up with the other negative one. So I'm gonna have magnesium, and I'm gonna have hydroxide. Now, just looking at the charges that they were before, magnesium was a two plus, and hydroxide was a one minus. So in order to balance that form or yeah that compound, I'm going to need to have two of these. So put that in brackets because it's one of these polyatomic ions, and I need two of them. Plus, so magnesium and hydroxide go together, and now sodium and sulfate are going to go together. So I always write the metal first, not always, but 95% of the time. So it'll be sodium and sulfate. Okay, sulfate's a two minus, sodium's a one plus. So to balance those charges, I need another sodium, so I'll put a two there. Okay, now I'm gonna erase all those charges up above because they're not part of my equation. Now I want to balance the whole equation. Okay, so when I take a look at it, let's, let's look to see what's off kilter. I have one magnesium here, one magnesium there, they're good. One sulfate here, one sulfate there, they're good too. One sodium here, oh, two sodiums, that messes me up. So I need to put a two in front of here, 
and that will give me the two sodiums, but that also gives me two hydroxides. And when I look over here, sure enough, I've got two. So now just by putting that two there, the equation is balanced. Let's try one more. Uh, I'm gonna make up another one. Um, let's do a, uh, a for me or a decomposition reaction, or maybe a, a single replacement. Let's do HCl plus fluorine. Okay, here's and maybe let's call it NaCl instead of H. So I have NaCl, and I want to react that with fluorine. Okay, again, like I said before, the fluorine, this two there, is because fluorine as a diatomic element is bonded like that. There's two of them, and they're, they, always, they always go together when they're alone. But when they hook up with somebody else, it depends on who they hook up with, how many fluorines you need. You might need one, you might need two or three or more. Okay, so if this is a single replacement reaction, this fluorine, because, again, periodic table here. Okay, because fluorine's on this side, it's right there, it's going to replace somebody else that's also a non-metal. And so chlorine's right below it, so this fluorine's going to go and kick out the chlorine and slip in there by itself. So there'll be a sodium, and it's going to hook up with fluorine. Okay, um, let's look at charges to see if that um, formula is balanced. So sodium is a one plus, and anybody in that column is a one minus. So one plus one minus, they're balanced, that formula is written correctly. Plus, and then the chlorine gets kicked out on its own. But, last day I said when uh, chlorine or any of these ones, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen, when those are by themselves, we always write them as Cl2. Okay, so notice that this two here has nothing to do with any number that gets put on the F there. The, the thing that determines whether there's gonna be a number there or not is who it's hooked up with. So since it's hooked up with sodium, which is a one plus, and fluorine's a one minus, they're even Steven. So you only need one fluorine to balance out the nitrogen. Okay, so now let's just, one last thing, let's uh, balance the, the whole thing out. So I've balanced the, it's sort of funny because I say this one plus one minus, that balances this compound, but then I have to balance the whole thing. So one sodium, one sodium, one chlorine, two chlorines, whoops. I need two chlorines on the left, so I'll put a two here. But by putting a two there, that also gives me uh, that I need to write a two there in front of that sodium. But then that gives me two fluorines. And then on the left-hand side, sure enough, I've got two fluorines. Now I'm balanced. All right, hopefully that uh, gave you a little bit of uh, help on uh, writing the equation and also balancing it.